Okay, my friends, this is going to be interesting. And if you have any interest in science or physics or any of that stuff, you should pay close attention because this is, this is wrong. What is energy? Energy is ability to work. That is not wrong. Scientists define energy as ability to, to, to do work. I agree, it is. That's one form of energy. Modern civilization built on this because we can transform energy from gasoline into piston power, from light into electricity. We've learned how to harness it and do work with it. However, do we understand how that energy is created? Where does it come from? What is the nucleus made of to create these kind of energies? What's going on with these energies? This is what they do not understand. And I do. And here it is, is, is the new physics model. The standard model doesn't work, never worked. You can't have a big giant positive and little bitty tiny negative, and they just slam together. It's just totally nonsense. It was from the beginning. Everything there is is a dipole. We always considered an electron, a little tiny glowy little thing, which it is. It is. I agree with that. However, Attached to it is the dark matter they never knew. They've never seen it before. They call it a muon. When they slam things together in a particle collider, they see these two particles as the smallest particles they can find. They are attached together called neutrinos. Then they also see them, not in this configuration, but they see the black ball never change. They see the white ball go into a shower. Let me show you what they do see and what we have produced and you'll understand that I do understand energy. Okay, here's the Fermi lab again showing these two point particles that one of them is fixed and one of them is squishy, they call the point particle. And this is what we would always call an electron, but it is attached to this dark matter. They see this in debris and didn't realize what they were seeing. This goes back almost 10 years. And again, it's Don Lincoln, the same guy that we're going to be talking about here that's asking about what is energy. And energy comes, I can explain quite well what energy is. And, and, and I would love to engage in anybody that's a physicist that wants to engage. Because until you understand electron flood theory, you, you're never going to understand energy. They can't understand. It's impossible. It doesn't work. Now, this is from the same guy, Don Lincoln, that we're going to be talking about, from his article about energy. And this is the two particles they saw, the ones that I just was speaking about, the, the black and white particles. And he says that one of them, the extended particle, is a black fixed size, it never changes, and the other one is a mathematical abstraction, which is zero size, but it has a field around it. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that 100%. And these are the two smallest particles they can find. Now, he also agrees with my assertion that there is a quantum foam. And that quantum foam says that empty space is not empty. It's full of light particles. Light has to be somewhere. It's on its way to colliding with the Earth. Where the hell do you think it is? They don't realize light is light. They don't realize it's a particle. And they still don't realize it's a particle. It's absolutely amazing. We are scrubbing through this light. It's not a vacuum in space, absolutely not a vacuum. This is saturated with light particles that are continuously concussing with our outer atmosphere, the ionosphere. That's what's creating huge amounts of heat. That's why we're overheating, because it was swelling our atmosphere so huge now because of combustion that it's scrubbing so hard that that is just... When you had just been going like this before, nice and easy, not... It's scrubbing. That's why we have overheating and global warming is from combustion, but not from carbon. Carbon's not keeping the heat in. Carbon's just a process, you know, carbon dioxide just is swelling. All right, I'm going to show this a little clearer, but spiral galaxies, and as far as I can see, most of them do spiral. So something's for making them move, whether it's expansion, forward movement, sideways, I don't know. But here's what it is. Light and all energy spins like this. It's a right-hand spin. The arms are being bent backwards. Now, if it's a right-hand spin, that means it's going this direction that way. You see it? And that would force these arms to go this way. You see it? Spinning this way. This tip is way ahead of these arms. 
it's out in front and as these arms are spinning backward and being scrubbed against the particles that are in space because these are loaded with particles everywhere there is, is all of this stuff sending out this light where do you think it is between it hits you from where it started where do you think it is do you think it's nowhere it's obviously between the two of us so this is spinning going that direction there's almost no question about it and these arms are being folded back as it spins this way it's these are being folded back now let me show you a different shot of our solar system and how it spins everybody thinks it's just like another you know, kind of flat you know record player spinning around a circle no it's moving forward on one of these arms well what does that mean all of the light stuff is be, you know the, the smaller particles which is the earth and mars and the moons and all that they're trailing behind the sun the sun is the one that's sitting forward so they're spinning behind the sun doing exactly like this these spins are way back here the sun or the central core is way up here here's what it is on earth just to prove to you that the sun is spinning and moving forward i can show you both of those things if you can see those two or those three little particles there and right, i'm going to do some doodles on the screen in a second and they'll make it more obvious but my contention is the sun is moving this direction spinning this way that's what creates this scrub and this trail zone these are the poles now let me put a little doodle and you'll see it all right this should give you an idea the sun this is actually the moon because this is a solar eclipse this so the the moon's um, shadow is cast over the sun's disk so we can actually see all of these particles spitting out into space those particles will end up hitting something else us or, or whatever hits but they're in the meantime they're out in space they're particles I've shown them there's no question whatsoever they're particles now and there's no question of what I'm showing you right now as you will see after I wipe off the doodles it's spinning this direction the sun right hand spin moving that direction why do i know this you see these red spots there's three fields set up right here the main field is right in the center of the scrub and that's the center i know it's the center because this is the poles you've got a positive and a negative pole which is shooting out energy north to south now this is spinning this way so that means that the sun's influence into the oncoming stuff is magnified because it's spinning this way it's spinning smashing in and additionally going this way this side the sun is trailing back this way so it sort of skims off the side and has much less energy this is very energetic as you'll see from these three red spots this is the poles so what have i shown the sun is spinning this way it's moving through the galaxy in that direction because of this impact versus this that's the trailing as it spins these are the poles and these particles are leaving never to come back to that sun our particles in our atmosphere don't have enough energy to, to, to escape a little bit does not much compared to what gets sucked back to earth i can show you the magnetic fields i have them that show these magnetic interactions of circling and coming right back into itself and that's what happens in the smaller bodies these they don't circle and come back they, they go home those little piggies never come home okay so we have the unveiling away go the doodles leave us you doodles okay now what are we looking at remember i showed you there was three bright spots well there is that one there is the, the center. You see, it's at dead center of the spin. This is nothing more than an electric motor. This is crashing forward into all these particles in space that are hitting it. They're smashing into it. It's scrubbing like this, glowing like hell in these three spots. This sets up its own field, which makes this set up a field, which makes this set up a field. 
it's quite obvious the poles are here and here. They're shooting straight out from here. Now, this is the scrub zone over here, but because it's scrubbing in here, it's much more impact here than here. It's coming this way, and this is coming this way too. So it's sort of working with itself and rubbing it off. It's all go leaving the same way as this, but it's not so violent as this side. Let's just go with that. Now, what else do we ta have to talk about? The, the, the temperatures. Now, let me show you something. Hold on a second. All right, this should give you a, a visual of what's happening. The sun, as I said, spinning this way, moving through the universe this way on the arm of the Milky Way, creating this magnetic field around, but it's so intense that the particles can escape. They don't come back. In our, in our magnetic field, they come back to home primarily. This spin is scrubbing all of these particles, which is the space is filled with them. They're everywhere. So we have to get through them, and as we spin, we excite them. They excite these particles, and these particles out here go to millions of degrees out here. Only 10,000 on the surface. Millions out here. It's because the scrub, identical to what's happening on Earth right now. That's our global warming. All right, what I showed you is exactly what you see here. Here's our Earth. Obviously, this is a perspective from the Earth. The Earth is like a tiny dot here, and the sun is much huge. But to look at what's going on with the interaction of space, this area out here is not a vacuum, not at all. It is filled with the emissions of every luminous body, 100% filled, saturated, as the Fermi Lab calls it, the quantum foam. That's what it is, these, these particles. They don't realize these light particles are the quantum foam, and they are particles and they are light, which I will show you or have shown you. Now, at this zone right here, which is our ionosphere, all right, ions have extra electrons or not enough electrons. They're just, there's, they're charged particles. Let's go with charged particles. Forget the ion thing. Call them charged particles. They, 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 they push, they push and shove other particles. Now, they're spinning, they're partially glued to our Earth, and we're spinning them on, around, around, scrubbing everything in space. That's what's heating our atmosphere terribly. And because it's expanding and getting hard because of the gases, it's scrubbing like a tire on a road, harder and harder every day. And it's getting hotter and hotter out here. And that's what's causing our hurricanes, floods, global warming, weather patterns moving, shifting, droughts, extreme weather conditions, heat and cold moving patterns of, of where the normal coldness would stay because it sort of drifts around on top of the ocean or on top of the poles. Well, now it's being pushed and shoved and dropped and pulled, moved and slammed, and that's what's going on because we are expanding. All right? It has nothing to do with, well, it's carbon dioxide fills the atmosphere, but the carbon is not holding the heat in. The carbon is just disassociated with the uh, carbon dioxide, it's gas now, where it w at one time it was a chunk of this. And somebody burnt it up and it turned into carbon dioxide and it's, it's, it increased its size thousands of times. We have to stop combusting and the only way we can do that is with my device, which is powered by dipole flood theory. And that device is this right here where we accelerate light turn it into neutrinos, split the neutrinos into muon and electron showers, collect the electron showers, turn it into electricity. And I think it'll work, and we could do this within weeks if it would be looked at quickly.